Hey, 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 let's put it all on the line right now, you son of a bitch. You feel like shit and you want something to eat. How about a donut with some vitamins shoved in them? Well, I've got some great news for you, you enterprising bastard. I'm making them. I'm Dan the man, and I've decided to kick getting sick right in the balls with my new vitamin donuts. You want a Boston cream with an extra dose of vitamin A to keep the skin, hair, nails, gums, and teeth looking fucking spectacular? How about a frosted glaze with a nice piece of vitamin E to maintain those muscles and red blood cells? No, I know you can't say no to a nice, warm, jelly-filled donut with a heaping help of fish oil to make sure your sperm is sprightly and not deformed. Take it from me, Dan the man. You gotta take care of yourself. Grab a vitamin donut today from the back of my van for only $2 a piece. That's a goddamn steal, my friend. Mention Mind Gap podcast during our exchange of goods, and I'll throw in a free sample of salmon my brother Dave caught off the coast of Alaska last summer while he was commercial fishing. It's to fucking die for. I'm Dan the man. And you got to try my vitamin-filled donuts today. This week's episode is brought to you by Elfin and Castle, located at 185 North Wabash and 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois. Look, I know you're looking for that perfect English pub experience so you can grab some incredible drinks and tasty food. Elfin and Castle has you covered. They have excellent daily drink specials, happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and some delicious-ass food for you to chew on while you watch some fucking sports. Come on down to Elephant and Castle at 185 North Wabash or 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois, and tell them that Mind Gap Podcast sent you. Hey, happy Thursday, friends. Let's face it, it's weird out there. People are staying home, lifestyles are disrupted, and it's hard to know what's really going on. So Justin and I take some time to break down what's going on with each other during the coronavirus social distancing as we record over Skype. We talk about how this pandemic has impacted the world, the economy, and our day-to-day lives. We also take some time to celebrate the good that has come out of this in the way of creativity and kindness that has really flourished despite the difficult times. We hope you're staying safe and taking care of yourself, and we couldn't be happier to give you something to listen to in the meantime. So take a moment to relax, take a breath, and let's hop into episode 239 of Mind Gap Podcast. Mind Gap Podcast. off my chest. Life is good. Life is great. Life is wonderful. You know, it's not off your chest. What's that? Hair. That's true. You know, where is the hair is off my face? He- head. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Your, <laughs> your top of your, you beat me there. Skull. Yes, that's true. Your skull, my right. skull, but I did. Yes. I shaved my beard. I shaved my beard today. <laughs> yeah, but not off. No, but I didn't know why that Jill doesn't say it anymore, but she hates it when I trim it this, this short, yeah, you look weird. I don't like it. I know. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it, but there's a point where it gets so long. Like it's even though I try to trim my mustache and stuff like that, it's it's constantly in around my mouth, like long enough that it drives me nuts. Uh, see, you should you should have me. You should let me shave you sometime. Wait, you shaved most got, of your beard off too, didn't you? I've got it down to a science. Uh, I went from a I was at an eight, and I went to a four. So I went, I went, I went halfway is down. Is that the metric system or is that, yep. uh, <laughs> that's the, that is, that's the, uh, the follicle system. Is that universal by the way? What metrics? No, <laughs> <laughs> the, like the beard trimmer stuff and the hair trimmer. Like is it, if someone goes, I want a four, is that just universally accepted everywhere? In like, if you go to if you go to the the haircut place, mm-hmm. then, then yes, it is. Uh, because That's what I, I'm, t- I, I'm not talking about the Bank of America. I'm talking no, about no, <laughs> like here's well here's the thing. I don't know if you go to uh, like if you buy like a Philips Norelco shaver. Mm-hmm. I don't know this uh, this week's episode brought to you by Philips Norelco shavers <laughs> for the closest shave 
Tri Phillips Norelco. Um, if you buy one of those, I don't know if that length is consistent with like a barber's length. Do you know what I mean? Like, I do, and I don't know why they would ever yeah. choose to do that. That seems really dumb. Well, why does the U.S. do um, the what is it? The empirical system, and everyone else does fucking metrics. I'll do you one better, man. Women's clothes, yeah. right? I mean, it, a, a, a one size, like you know, an eight in one store is a different size somewhere else. Like every freaking store or brand, like Old Navy, is different than I don't know clothes. I don't know Neiman Marcus. Is that a place? <laughs> I also don't understand. It is. That is the place. <laughs> Yay. And it's, and it's not a hardware store. So good job. Yay. Um, Why would I go I hardware? Don't <laughs> I don't know. Um, you don't know me. I don't know you at all. Uh, it's not a, it's not a confectioner's uh, retail shop. <laughs> it's um, not a boat store. I, I'll tell you that much. It's, I'll tell you what. It's not a boat store. Um, I don't understand why they don't just do shoe sizes. One size. Like, why do you have to have women's sizes and men's sizes? Like, why don't you just have one universal shoe size and you are what you are in that size? That's a wonderful question. I, I, I mean, I, and that's a legit, I'm not trying to be funny. That is a legitimate I and, and here's the thing. It could be a very, very ignorant question to ask. But to me, I'm just like, make one size. And like, if you're a women's, I don't know, if you're a women's eight and that's a men's 11, <laughs> then you're just. I, you know, pick pick one or the other. It's like and pick then, a time um, zone. All right, right. Stick with I it. I mean, you know what I mean. Like and like, if just pick one universal size, and you just are a number, regardless. I feel like it'd be a lot easier. Oh, I agree. Like I don't understand. Uh, let's see here. Why are women's why men women men's shoes sizes different? Maybe the internet will tell us. <clears throat> I'm sure someone has written an op-ed piece The main on it. difference between Uh-oh. men's and women's shoe sizes this, is the width. This sounds like a Fox News article. <laughs> is the width of the shoe. It is necessary to understand that women's shoes are built wider at the forefoot and toe area and narrower in the heel, which is reflective of the gender variations in foot shape. I feel like I've got a wide front of my foot, though. I need a wide, yeah. like when I when I when I buy shoes, if I buy like like fitted shoes for myself and not just like off the rack, uh, I have to go wide. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I get you right just, there. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying we well, can simplify also like, life again. You know, it's like uh, in sports, right? It's like uh, golf. I'm sorry, not sports games. Um, you know, like in golf. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when uh, you know, women, they get to, you know, tee off closer to the hole. It's like, okay, why, why are we doing that? In basketball, the women's basketball is lighter. It's like, right, oh, and smaller. Okay, lighter and smaller. I'm like, okay, why? Now, if you want to talk about shooting distances and stuff like that, okay, I guess it's still dumb, but I guess, I don't know. Different leagues, different rules, I suppose. But like, why is there like, well, this is the women's basketball, this is the men's basketball, okay? But in some situations, like, um, like shot put, right? Mm-hmm. Once, uh, pretty much, I think it's from junior high through the Olympics, the women have the exact same weight. It's eight pounds. Okay. But men, it's before high school's eight pounds. In high school, it's twelve pounds collegiate and through uh, Olympic level, it's 16 pounds. Now it's a heavy fucking rock to throw. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty gnarly. Um, it's a heavy rock. so to some extent, I guess that kind of makes sense, you know, to me, I guess, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Why do we have to go? Why can't we always just all use an eight pounder? Is that just not cool enough? Oh, I, look, I'm fine with it. <laughs> When that, every time I throw a shot put, I try to stick with the eight pounder. So I have no qualms with sticking with eight pounds. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that stuff has never really made sense to me. Sometimes, especially just the dumber things like golf. I'm sure when it started, it's like, oh, these vaginas can't hit it that far. We'll let them, we'll let them tee off a little bit closer. I'm like nowadays, I'm like, there's a lot of professional women that would smoke, you know, any dude on the course. That's I will. Like, I, look, if I could get, if I can tee off closer, I would be thrilled to do so. No shit, man. I would. I need all the help I can get because I am terrible at ball sports. 
Mm, that's not what I've heard. Really? What? Uh, well, I'm good at games, terrible at sports. Oh. If there, yeah. what, what's the one sport you think you're good at? The one sport I think I'm good yeah, at? Yeah, what's your best? You have to go down. Sure. You're, you're sure going into some arena of sorts, okay? And they're mm-hmm. like, you can choose the sport. The <laughs> Wait, did I jump the gun? Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. Were I'll, you I'll, teeing me up? I'm I, sorry. I was, we're I was, only, I was, we're I was, only six minutes into this. I was... <laughs> I was just foreshadowing for what may come later. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> but they're like, okay, um, this is a death match. All right. It's free for all. Battle Royale, sort of. And you get to choose the sport in which this all takes place. The listeners can't hear this, but right now, due to the coronavirus, Justin and I are uh, doing this via remotely. And I'm watching Justin try to very, very sneakily take off his sweatshirt while he already has his glasses and his headphones on. He's just really casually been trying to do it for the last two minutes or so. And it finally came to a point where he's like, shit, I got to get this off over my head. And he finally just did it. It's very warm in this room. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's, I'm going to put a pin in that question. Okay. And just want to, no, we're going to unpin that question. What sport (laughs) am I good at? Cheerleading. Next. It's not as false. (laughs) <laughs> you ask. <laughs> you had to pick um, one sport. You had to pick one thing where you're like, all right, this is the thing that I'm going to go down. This is where I think I'm best. Archery. Archery. That's what you're going with? You don't seem to me like an archer kind of guy. You've obviously never seen me with a bone arrow. I haven't, which makes me leaves you <laughs> believe that you are not Hawkeye for starters. So, well, would you know that Hawkeye was Hawkeye until it was too late? I think so. In most comics, he lets everyone know he's Hawkeye. So, you know. Well, because he's braggadocious. That's not me, Doug. <laughs> I'm a, I, too, am extraordinarily <laughs> humble. So, you know. <laughs> I'm the most humble. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I would probably say, I, I think I had a natural, when I was younger, I kind of, I, I had a natural... Uh, proclivity towards baseball i suppose okay um i was i was <laughs> pretty very good. convincing like i guess i guess i've never been good at sports man yeah. uh I, ba- baseball just because i mean i can uh you know i can i can i can sprint pretty pretty fast uh, if i need to get under the ball um i feel like my reflexes are pretty good i was terrified of the ball when i was a batter so i'd be a i'd be a horrible hitter dude what about wrestling you did a little bit of like it's combat sport. sports wow <laughs> my heart Gauntlet has been throwing down my heart my heart hurts now and it's because i have cardiomyopathy um <laughs> diabetes diabetes um, yeah I, you know maybe wrestling i guess yeah I, I, I had not considered that so baseball or wrestling i would say are the two sports <laughs> that i would, I would what about dominate. gymnastics oh god no <laughs> have, did you have you seen me in my in my unitard <laughs> there, here we are, here we go again. I no, I haven't. Do you have that Justin somewhere? Making his political statements. Uh, <laughs> I believe I do. Actually, no, I guarantee I do. Uh, I'll see if I can drum that up. Can we it's post that a, to our social medias? It is a sight to be. Yes, of course we can. Yes. It's a sight to behold. Yes. Doug. If I can, if I can find it, I will. I will make sure we post it. That would be amazing. Yeah, be so uh, cool. me and my gymnastics Ooh. unitard. I love it, dude. It's yeah. the way you say it. It's I know. It's everything you say it. It's just it's. <laughs> so I don't hear it. Speaking of, what, you know, what about you? By the way, uh, is it, me. Is that I'm assuming wrestling. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, one of one of the things that Nally really likes to do right now is we have a pond over by our house, and what she's just loved to do recently is go over there, throw dynamite throw, in, and, and kill throw, the fish. Throw, I am pretty sure there's no fish in there. If they are, they're mutants. But. Um, <laughs> She loves to throw rocks. She just loves to throw rocks in there. And I think one of the, the, the thing that gets me excited is I think the reason why she likes to do this was um, a couple of years ago when we went back to my hometown in Kirksville, there's a national park, and we would go out to the, we call it the lake. Uh, it's called Thousand Hills. And we would just took her out there just to throw some rocks, and she loved it. So whenever she's, she sees water, she wants to throw rocks. So... We were over at the okay. pond. She's like, Dad, can we throw rocks? I was like, yeah. And like pretty much we've gone like four or five times over the last couple of days. And she just likes to throw rocks. The reason why I'm telling this story is we went out there today and she wants me to try and find her big rocks. And sometimes I find really big rocks. And yeah. today I found one. I was like, yeah, it's kind of like a shot put. And I did my old <laughs> shot put for him and I chucked it. I'm like, that felt really good. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah, look at that was, thing go. 
Was she impressed? Oh, she, yeah. I mean, she was excited. She covered her eyes because she thought it was going to splash her because it was a big rock. She's like, oh, God, nice. this is going to get me. But I'm like, Dad's going to throw this pretty far out there into the pond. So you should. You're, you can look at her and just go, Natalie, we're going to do this again and again until you keep your eyes open and watch Dad. You watch me. You watch you me. watch. I don't care if the glare is coming off the water. You watch me. Look how good I am. Look at this. Um, I don't know. I I was pretty good at rest. I mean, if you want me just to kind of get in someone's way and block them, I'm pretty good at that. That's about the only thing I was really uh, good at in football. I could block so people. The old sport the- of the old sport of block. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am block. I am block. Man, he really exceeds at block. Have He's you ever really seen him good. play it? Dude, that, that, he gets in people's way like like the best of them. I'm just like, oh, he, that guy, he block. Now, that's high school level. I'm sure at, at college mm-hmm. level, I would have gotten smoked. Um, but <laughs> I guess if I had to choose current state, probably I'd go with shot put. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. 15 years ago, maybe wrestling. A bit in better shape. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, I like yeah. It. yeah. Um, but that being but said. Very, very, know, very minimal wrestling happening nowadays. Yeah, because people hate kissing. But the reason why that is, is because <laughs> the coronavirus is all up our butts. And yeah. like I said, Justin and I are currently recording remote, which is exciting. I done yeah, fucked we, up the Twitch stream tonight, unfortunately, I, but I'd like to just take uh, conservatively three or four hours and talk about what the uh, setup to tonight has been. Oh my god! <laughs> to say <laughs> to say no one ever in the history of man has gone through the adversity that we have had tonight may be an understatement. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we we attempted to do. We attempted to get everything streaming through this uh, service called uh, OBS. And we're using Skype and we're, I'm plugged in. I've got our Zoom plugged into my computer, routing through Skype. That's going to Doug's computer. He's got his mic plugged in. So all these different elements on top of each other. And it was the most glorious shit show you have ever witnessed. Uh, Those who are on the stream. Thank you. They got such a treat tonight. Oh, boy. (laughs) With the the feedback. I think if I'm not, we're probably going to leave that up there, right? I mean, why not? Are we right? going to pull that down? And I'm going to make that YouTube a highlight. Forever? I'm going to make that a highlight. I'm going to edit it just to that point. I'm just going to have people see what happened was, first of all, Justin struggled to log into Skype because yep. I thought oh. he and I had Skyped recently and I could go through my history. The last time we Skyped was three years ago. So I ate my words on that one. So he was struggling <laughs> to find his way to log into that. He gets in it and then I'm feeling pretty good. And then we turn on the Twitch stream and, and there's 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 visuals, but there's no audio whatsoever. They can't hear us, and it sucks because we had a lot of people in there. I was so excited. People are indoors right now anyway. Can't do much. It's a perfect time to hang out with us, do some Twitch, talk mm-hmm. some shit, have a great time. I was pumped, and no audio. Couldn't hear me. Couldn't hear Justin. Nothing. So I'm just frantically trying to adjust the audio, trying whatever I can, and then I flip something on. And we get audio from Justin, but then it just starts looping and looping and looping, and it doesn't stop. It just but here's loops. the thing. It was only like 10 seconds of the of everything that we had been saying. Yep. For some reason, it was only about 10 seconds, and then it just it would stop and start again. And I it's still right now I'm thinking about it. I can't figure out why the fuck it did that. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know why it chose that 10 seconds out of everything. Cause I kept waiting and for it, it to break with additional stuff that we were saying, but we didn't, it just <laughs> kept going and it started slowly. <laughs> so I killed, I killed the stream and it slowly faded away, but then it started coming back. <laughs> like as science oh. would say, the devil had something to do with this one. It was sending right. it back from hell and it was terrifying, <laughs> and it was creepy, and it wasn't fun at all. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we found uh, we found the glitch in the matrix on that one. And I gotta say, Twitch streamers, uh, thank you for putting up with that. You guys were troopers, and I'm sorry. We're gonna work on getting this figured out so that next time we can all hang out in the comfort of all of our homes and shoot the but, shit, have a good time, and uh, and relax. So apologies for that. And but the comments were were second oh, to none. They I were mean, the best. our Twitch streamers uh, are just are the funniest. 
We have some great fans, and we yeah. thank you guys for putting up with our bullshit and, and dealing with us <laughs> as we try to figure this out. Uh, I, I'm going to relentlessly research this because I'm so mad about right. it. This is this is really you, if you need to know one thing about Doug is that Doug is like a rat terrier is that he won't once he gets his mind set on something he just goes for that thing. <coughs> won't let I'm, it go. I've noticed I've been very obsessive about stuff recently. Like <laughs> something will just be stuck in my brain and I literally have to be like I'm sorry, I have to go take care of this right now because I will not stop thinking about it. I, I won't. <laughs> and some of it's good. It's it's most of it's creative. Like there's just right. something in my brain and I just like, I, I, I can't, it's there and my, it's, it's, it's urging me instead of like pushing it down and telling it to shut up. I'm like, no, we're going to do this. Perfect example. Uh, I've spent the last couple nights staying up far past my bedtime editing stuff. And last night I told myself, I'm not going to do this again. I went to bed 10 minutes earlier than the night before. So I guess that's a victory. <laughs> and as I'm about Baby ready steps. to go to sleep, all of a sudden, I get I start telling a story in my head, storytelling of um, something that happened that I was like, you know, it was a serious moment that I kind of wanted to make into a joke. And I started formulating the story in my head and it was going and it was going and I made a, a comparison to something I did when I was younger. And I was like, this is pretty good. And I was like. Dude, you should record this right now. Oh, no. Don't let it go. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still a little under the weather. Um, so I go, because I've heard about this, like comedians, songwriters, whatever. They wake up in the middle of the night. They have an idea. They're like, I'll remember that in the morning. Mm -hmm. They go back to sleep, and then they never do. They never remember Comedians, it. songwriters, Justin. Justin. Right. And I'm they just don't. They're like, that's oh, fine. They trust. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, dude, just your phone's right there. Just open up the voice memo and just record yourself talking. Just get it down. Get the, the rough, dirty version down. And I did. I spent about 10 minutes just telling the story, whatever my thought was. And then I closed it off and I went to bed. But I was obsessing about it. I was like, I, ha I have to I have to get this down. I want to tell the story. And I was like, where am I going to tell the story? I don't fucking know. Like, right. what, what, what am, I, am I working up a, 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 a 10 minutes of stand up? No. But I was like, <laughs> I want to, I'm just, I'm trying to lean into that stuff nowadays because most of the time I just sort of like kick it to the curb or I, I, I yeah. suffocate it with the plastic bag. And I was just like, shh, you know, be quiet. I don't need this right now. But I'm like, no, man, it's there. It's good. Just capture it. Maybe you'll do something with it someday. I I, uh, I have been wanting to, and it, it takes no effort whatsoever. I just have not done it. I just I need to start sleeping with a um, a pad of paper next to my bed. Yeah. Because I have the same thing where I want to wake up and and just start jotting. Like if I have an idea, or if I have an idea right before I'm falling asleep, just jot it down real quick. Um, but the 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 voice memo, even when you're out and about, just during the day, I think the voice for me, the voice memo app is such an underutilized app. Yeah. It's such an underutilized app, and it's so. Uh, every, I mean, everything nowadays. We just, uh, you know, we, we're either recording video or taking photos on our phone or, or consuming podcasts. It's we have such a um, a recordable day to day experience that there's like it. It's such an easy app to use, and I just don't think a lot of people use it. Yeah, no, I agree, and you know, really, what inspired me to do that was you told me about what Mark Duplass does. Oh, the he, vomit draft. Yeah, the vomit draft. Just get it out there and how he just will yeah. dictate it, whatever dialogue and everything like that. And I've really been trying to lean into that lately and be like, it's in my head. It's got to get out of my head somehow. Let's just right. put it down somewhere. And that's where it was. It's like, this story doesn't need to live in my head. I have a concept. I have some thoughts. I have some connections. Just say it. There's the vomit draft. And now I can refine it from there. Right. And the nice thing about that <coughs> is that uh, with with writing, like sometimes I'm sure if you found with if you talk it through, there's nuances and stuff because you can talk so much quicker than you can write. You're you're able to get it all out without having to like slow yourself down to finish writing that sentence because in my mind, I'm already already on to the next sentence. So that's the nice thing he talks about in his book that he said, uh, you know, you 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 don't get the chance to edit as you're going. You're just yeah. spitting it out so quick. That it's the first thing off your head, so it's really like, it's it's the uh, unfiltered. What did he call it? Something like the unfiltered 
raw creativity yeah. instead of the instead of the stuff that you get you know you 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 refine it you put it back through a filter you refine it again you put it back through the filter and then you get this like high fructose corn syrup at the end you know yeah. but like the vomit draft is that raw natural stuff that just kind of comes out which is I, I always thought that was an interesting concept well you know I've been thinking of just writing stories lately I can't tell you I've done this most of my life and it's bizarre to me but I'll have an idea of something and I'll just play a scene in my head over and over and over. Like daydreaming, commuting, in the shower, taking a dump. Usually right when I go to bed, that's kind of where I do most of my scene work, if you will. And I'll just like play it over again. And it's almost like I kind of liken it to running a simulation where okay. I do a simulation and I was like, cool. Do I like how that went? I don't know. Let's try it again. And I'll like play out the parts that I liked in my mind and then try something different. What if this happens? And I'm like, cool, let's do it again. I do it again and I do it again and do it again. And I'm like, cool, I think I understand how that works. And I just move on to the next piece. And then it's yeah. just like a continuous, almost, a, I guess, I don't know if it's obsessive, but it's just me trying to process whatever it is, this this thing is that I want to get out. And there's my favorite part is most of the time when I'm taking a shit, I'll sit down and I'll go into daydream mode and I'll just start talking out loud of dialogue and I just roll with it. And I've had some of the best dialogue while I'm taking a shit and I just walk away and I never, I don't always remember exactly what was said. I was like, dude, that was really good. I probably should have wrote that down. I'm going to urge you to not use your voice memo app while you're doing that. No, disagree. Strongly disagree. All right. All right. Well, we're going to agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> Hold on. You're, have you have you ever had have have you ever had uh, after you've done that after you've had a a, a monologue or a solo dialogue with yourself in there? <laughs> That's what you, I call my dumps. Solo dialogue. Solo dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had? Have you ever? Well, two questions. There's so many questions I have from this. Two questions. questions one, have you ever, pal. Two questions. Have you ever done it at work? Probably have not out lost, loud. Probably not. I was out say, loud. like, have you ever lost your like your sense of surroundings and just like gotten so in your story that you realize, you're like, oh god, I've been talking out loud in a stall at work. No, I've never done. Okay. That. If if I have, it's when I know there's nobody in there. And then number two, have you done it at home? Come out and then Jill gone the fuck were you doing in there no no okay i'm very aware of my surroundings because i've been self-conscious of like my creativity and things like that yeah. so i'm very yeah. like <laughs> if i'm alone i'll talk about it but um speaking of that did you, <laughs> this is a, a side i don't know if you'll be able to to hear this um good news is um the listeners will because i have this set up so that they can um well we hope we hope <laughs> we hope if not whatever i'm not gonna edit it because fuck this fuck this day Jill sent me a tweet. Um, I don't know if you've, you've heard of this, but uh, there was this like <laughs> city hall meeting and this guy uh, left during the meeting. He was like one of the council members <laughs> to go use the bathroom and he forgot that his mic was on. So <laughs> this, this is this is a naked gun. Yeah, it's they, very, did this, they did this bit the naked gun in real life. And it's the best I thing. I love ever. it. I'm gonna, All right. I'm gonna play it right now. You won't be able to Please. hear it, but this is probably one of the keep this funniest break. things I've. Um, I won't <laughs> belabor all the details. I'm sure most of you remember Mr. Guest's presentation. So this woman's from last talking, time, and I imagine he's gonna hit some of the highlights the here in a minute. But the thing is that these deadly infections, there's something we can do about it, and what we can do is call on represent a governmental representative. <laughs> And the woman's trying to that keep going. Higher <laughs> up the chain of <laughs> these horrific farts are coming out. <laughs> and she starts laughing. <laughs> and ask for action at the federal level. Um, I am um, aware of Mr. Brainerd's concerns that he raised last time, and there were there would be instances where I actually agree. She's back on that track. We should take action locally first. <laughs> She there are not up. any um, KFO operations in Georgetown, so for us to just say it within the city limits. <laughs> it just goes really off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never had that that much of a bathroom experience before. I mean, this guy just had, he had like a lot of wound up tight toots that were just sort of like 
going like he's playing the would be He's very, very melodic with his uh, with what he was doing. Now, this so there's a little bit left here. I'm gonna Destra? play. Um, <laughs> so they're just losing their minds. They're so, laughing, trying to talk about coronavirus. This guy just walks back in, has absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's laughing. Don't know any boundaries. So a state by state approach so he sits would down just and they basically mean are telling the, him like, dude, your mic was on. <laughs> and he dies inside. And it's just like, he's like, what? They're like, yeah, he's like, I had no idea. It was on the whole time. It was just like, just farts, farts, farts. Oh, I'm like, so, oh my God. So good. <laughs> <coughs> so. It's amazing. Yeah. I, that, I've never had that happen to me. Thank God. I think I played for you once the dude that was like breathing really heavy in the, in the toilet, right? In the toilet area. He sounded like he was oh. doing leg press. The one at, at where at your work, yeah, he was or your just, old work, yeah. For ten seconds, like it, it was just going on. So I recorded it. It was ten seconds of just. Oh man. <sighs> I'm like, w- dude, what's happening, man? Like, are you out of breath? Like, we're, a, we're in a, a resting no, state. Thank you. And I was yeah. like, dude, this is, this is scary. This is a scary moment. But you know what's scary bunch. is the coronavirus. <laughs> oh wow. So good. <laughs> Such a good transition. Uh, how's it been? Uh, how's how's the dude? This has been crazy. It's been so crazy. Yeah, man. I uh, I I've gone from I've I've had a a wide breadth of emotions. Yeah, uh, a wide range of emotions. Um, the, I I started out in the camp of all right, guys. We relax. We get it. Everyone's getting the flu. Fucking relax. I was at, I was definitely in that camp. Yeah. Um. And then at some point, um, logic got the better of me, and I went, oh, this is, this is legit not good. And I started <laughs> really. Uh, I I just I I keep telling Beth. I was like. I just want things to be back to normal. This yeah, is not right? how I thought the decade would start off. It's a very rough start to a decade. Yeah. I mean, you know, to, like, to, to I, put was, it lightly, like yeah. I, I feel like I feel like the year has been canceled, basically. Like everything, all the uh, thoughts and ideas that I was like, oh, we can do this this year and oh, we'll go see this show and they come to town and yada, yada. And oh, then the summer we'll do I like all these th- things you were coming up with. And uh, like I said, like I just feel like the year has been canceled. Like it's just like, what the fuck is going on? It's it's very unprecedented. And I think the hardest thing for me is uh, not knowing. I just don't know who to trust right now. Oh, that's so. As far perfect. as information goes, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, man. And I, I think that's oh. the most stressful thing for me is that I'm like, I just want, I just want a better idea of, do I need to brace for? Because I heard someone today there was a. Bloomberg. Uh, no, not Bloomberg. I'm sorry. Who the fuck's the de Blasio? It was uh, the mayor of New York. De Blasio said uh, he his predictions. And I don't know what where he gets these from, but his predictions are that this is going to be worse than the, the Great Recession. And it's going to border along the Great Depression as far as how bad f- the financial institutions or uh, finances are going to get. And I and then someone else was like, oh, it'll be this and this, but not like. I just I, I would like to know how much I need to brace for. Like if I need to brace for a, a Great Depression part two, OK, I need to brace for that. If it's going to be like next week, it's going to be like, oh, it was not as bad as we all thought. OK, I need to brace for that. I just I'd like to I just wish I had a better idea. You know what I mean? A hundred percent, man. Like I've been really kind of paralyzed just by like I've legitimately just been split. <coughs> excuse me on this. Just like. I don't know what to think. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, just last week, you know, you know, at my job, they're like, hey, we got a plan for everyone basically working from home. Like, we're going to start putting a plan in place for that. And I was like, okay. I was like, sure, maybe it'll be a week or something. I just, I don't know. I, I don't have any sort of uh, precedent for this in my life of what to really assume is going to be what. And at the yeah. same time, Jill's like, I don't think we should take Natalie to swim class. I was like, why? She's like, everything else is shutting down. Like, why Why would we take her to swim class? I'm like, well, I mean, they're, ex- they're experts. They would know. They would tell us, right? Like, if, if this is not safe, you know? She's like... And I think that's the flaw in the thinking is because exactly what you opened yeah. your 
thought with is you don't have anything to base it. So even these experts, they're just going day to day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I think, I think it's one of those things where you just got to like, what makes sense for you? You yeah. know what I mean? Like if it, it may not make sense for anyone else, but you're like, look, I, we're not going, well, they didn't say they're shutting it down. It doesn't matter. We're just not going. You know yeah. what I mean? And you know, it came to Sunday night. Joe was like, should we take Natalie to school tomorrow? And I'm like, well, they're open. I mean, this, you know, I know the governor of Illinois basically banned all, didn't ban, but he shut down all schools. But our daycare didn't say that they were shutting down. So I was like, well, they're open. I mean, they. I trust this place. I think they're great. I think they're going to know. I mean, they would tell us if it's not okay. But Joe was like, I just, I really, she goes, at this point, they're canceling all these gatherings. Sports are canceled. Like all these things are canceled. She goes, right. in, in lieu of all of that, why would we bring our kid to daycare? And practical Doug's like, I agree. <laughs> right. Like that's a really hard argument to argue. Against. Like when they're basically saying baseball's canceled. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, when, that, okay. when that happened, I was like, oh shit. NBA yeah. canceled their season. Oh shit. Right. Like y- y- movies. Productions well, not, are getting canceled. Movie theaters, saying, movie release dates are getting pushed back. I'm just like, whoa. Right, not only are movie release dates getting pushed back, but to what you just said, like actual productions are getting shut down. Yeah. Like that's, and that is, you want to talk about, you know, again, an industry where you're losing a lot of fucking money. Like, holy yeah. shit. Not now, of course, every industry is losing money, but yeah. Well, I think. And I think the yeah. hardest one. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I think the hardest one at this point is the, uh, is the uh, of, of course, and everyone's been talking about this, the hourly workers, and oh. specifically the bars and restaurants, closing dining, where you can still do curbside pickup, you can still do delivery, but uh, shutting down, you know, the dining option, yeah. we've got a lot of people that we know, you know, we used, I used to do the other podcast, the best bar podcast ever, oh. and everyone that we had on that podcast makes their money from working, and yeah. if they don't work, they don't get paid. And so like that's to, to think of, think about conceptualize for a second, not having a paycheck for two weeks. I can't because that at least two weeks, because that's what the, the position they're in right now for the next two weeks until April, sorry, uh, what are we, March, March 30th or 31st. They're not the bars are, uh, dine in is, is closed. Dude. And it, it and may so go that beyond you're that. Not honestly, it may exactly. Yeah. Cause again, I can't tell. <coughs> I had a meeting today at work and they're, they're like, well, we're planning for possibly six weeks. And yeah. I'm like, well, and if you listen to the, the White House, they're saying it could be the you know, the quote unquote experts are saying that it could be July or August. Yeah, I, I, you just I don't know. Again, I don't know the barometer for this, and I look at that. Going back to your you know thoughts about the economy, like I mean, this is this is uh, the the impacts of this are going to be pretty devastating. Yeah. And in a probably insensitive way, also very fascinating for me, just from an economic standpoint, to sort of like look at what this is doing. Because when you think about everything that this does, you know, I mean, to things, you know, schools are just calling it quits for the year. There's there's right. colleges that are like, you're done. <laughs> right, some, go home. Just straight up, we're done. Some here. schools, like even high schools, you know, are just like, I'm out, you know, like right. we're, well, we're my good. Niece's, my niece's school is going to e-learning. Yeah, exactly. So like, should, they're they're gonna stay from stay stay home, and everyone just every, it's it's all online courses now. My brother texted me and said his school year is basically over at this point in time. So like, that's nuts. It's it's wild. And then you go to things like you said, like the restaurant industry. You know, again, shout out to Elephant and Castle. You know, right for always taking care of us and giving us a spot to record. You know, we're aside from us staying. You know, just being like, hey, we got to be you know responsible in this sort of regard. I, I would feel horrible. Imagine if we walked in there like, hey, guys, we're yeah. here to record. It would be dead in there. there. Yeah, there would be nothing in there. And it would be it would be it would be absolutely just it would be so. Dep- in fact, they wouldn't they obviously wouldn't have let us in. But the point yeah. being that, you know, all, you think of all these the gig economy, the independent contractors out there that work these gigs and things like that. And just the the financial impact that it has, right. you know, on the world, it's it's you know the the ripple effect of this is bonkers casinos were closing yeah dude if there's yeah, any I place mean, that loves money it's fucking casinos it's dude it's the white house right no casinos that's what I mean. <laughs> dude um, the casinos if they're like hey man oh, we yeah. probably need to shut this down i mean good lord 
you, I mean, yeah, you look at everything from, yeah, from, uh, you know, shipping to, uh, like you said, to, to industry, like casino, to bars, to teachers, to, to I mean, you just, you name it. it. It's, there's no, there's not one industry that this, that this is not affecting. Yeah. And that, that is, that is, I mean, as far as individuals go and then as far as like markets go, uh, stock markets and what have you, like, it's just, it, it is <clears throat> the, the, the effects, depending on how long this lasts, too, uh, it, using my economic, uh, you know, degree and and my background in economics, uh, depending on how long this goes, it, the 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 ripple effects from this are going to be like, let's say, best case scenario, it's you know another month, and then we're we're in the clear, and everything quote unquote returns to normal. The financial ripples from this are going to be felt for a long time after that. Yeah. It's not like everything's just going to rebound the next no. day. Well, because you got to think of just, again, this year, there may be some people rebounding by maybe Q4 to use some of the, some garbage language, you know. Gross. <laughs> once we rebound by Q4, get our ducks in a row, you know, once Ugh. we really just sort of Ugh. sync up, you know, we're all just sort of, uh, you know, headed in the right direction. I think we'll be able to really make sure that we're, you know, gaining some ground out there. <laughs> You subscribed to that bullshit word, business words newsletter, didn't you? I didn't. You sent me a wonderful article that talked about garbage language, which. Oh, I thought I thought you were I thought you subscribed to our one of our sponsors. No. OK, <laughs> but uh, I don't trust our sponsors. I love them, but I don't <laughs> trust them. And that's a very fair point. <laughs> um, but no one should trust. our sponsors. I mean, think about this, dude. I mean, if this goes for four to six weeks, I mean, you're talking month and a half, two months. I mean, that's that's almost the full quarter right. of business that's disrupted at best, disrupted. Right. You know, I mean, think of, again, I'm just thinking of if you're closing out canceling festivals, like things like South Dis- by Southwest, Disney World, Disney closed, Disney right. closed, dude, which really makes the most sense out of everything. It that really is a does. Cesspool. And yes. again, I, I, I would put them up there with casinos uh, as far as just <laughs> A wanting money, Liking money, yeah, <laughs> and B just the the international you know uh, yeah. uh, travel that happens there for that stuff, um, you know, just you think of something as simple as a hotel, right? Mm-hmm. Something like Lollapalooza. Let's say Lollapalooza comes in, you know how much ancillary uh, income is benefited to hotels, restaurants, mm-hmm. uh, right. shops, everything like that. If that's not there. That it's a huge hit. I just remember working at the hotel, and for four nights out of the year, we were guaranteed to be sold out with Lollapalooza. Guaranteed four nights. That's maximum income, maximum revenue for four nights. Well, that's gone. You know, if if you think about, you know, we're right. We're gonna start. You know, if I remember correctly, we're gonna start with um, uh, convention season starting very soon in Chicago. Right, the absolutely. Corner place and stuff like that. <clears throat> that stuff starts going out the window. Does the McCormick place is not getting used? You know that's money lost. That means people aren't coming to visit, which means airline travel is not being used. Hotels mm-hmm. aren't being stayed at. Restaurants aren't mm-hmm. getting. All that stuff just goes out the window. That that is a huge, huge impact on the economy. Right. The, that ripple effect, man. Yeah. It's insane, and it's also again well, incredibly fascinating to me when I think about stuff like that and how that affects everything and. It, it is on such a massive scale right now that I don't know how for her. I don't, I don't know what you do, man. I mean, I, I hear the, the some of the headlines are that they're thinking about, you know, just sending people money, you know, just the government right. being like, here you go, like spend some money, which is hilarious right. to me. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, man, uh, at this point, all options are on the table because this is a worldwide yeah. thing. This isn't just localized to a region. This is an entire world is being you know, affected by this. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Well, and I think too, like to that end, it's not, uh, you, you can't look at this with the same kind of pragmatic approach that you look at other things because the problem itself is in no way, shape or form logical or, uh, normal or like you've got to, this is one of those situations where they talk about like, we got to think outside the box. You absolutely have to go far outside the box because you've never had to solve for a problem like this before. Yeah. Ever like there was some uh, I was talking to uh, a couple other people who were in the industry and they were saying that, 
in their in, in their respective bars, uh, a couple a couple bars in the downtown area, um, they were saying that what they make in uh, on St. Patrick's Day, oh. uh, they were they were talking about. They're like, I hope they don't cl- they cancel the because at, at that time Chicago was like, we got this. We're gonna yeah. die the river. We're gonna have our parade. Fuck it. And uh, they were like, if that happens, if they do close that, they're like, what we make that Saturday before St. Patrick's Day, we make in one day what we normally make in a week. Yeah. And they were like, you know, that was one of those things where that is that keeps them in the black for a long time. And not only did they cancel the the parade uh, and the river dying, they completely shut down dine-ins. And so at that point, they weren't even they weren't even looking at that possibility. That seemed out of the out of they there's no way they could do that. That's not even something we need to consider because that's just crazy. Well, it comes and now you have to consider it. So to that end, like there are things that you just don't think you have to consider that, that that's why you have to think so far outside the box because this is just nothing like you've ever had to wrap your head around before. Yeah, man. And I think I guess I take a little bit of solace in this because there's always in situations like this and what you call, you know, your what is it? Acts of God sort of situation. Sure. No one can control this. Like it's here no. now to some extent you can mitigate the damage that it does. But, um, to this situation, like this thing came, it's spread. And in if, if in a weird way, it, it's kind of bringing people together, but don't right. be together socially distance. Okay. <clears throat> but right. in a way, like we all have a shared experience, which is kind of a weird positive out of this is, you know, yeah. some of the coolest things I've seen were what people are doing in Italy. Oh my Which is, God, talk about amazing. Like everyone's like, hey man, we're stuck in our apartments. We can't leave. So let's hop on our balconies and let's entertain each other, you know? Right. So they're singing to each other. They're playing instruments. They got classical artists that are out there playing their shit while normal dumb dumbs like you and I are being on pots and pans to play along with them. <laughs> it's like, right. Or I saw well, a dude b- b- bring out his DJ equipment and was like DJing out <laughs> I there. I that. was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. And that's what an, what a nice alternative. Like, turn off the news for a second, and go outside, or not go like, turn off the news, open your window, and have that shared experience. Like, what a cool thing where he's playing that, where you don't have to sit there and just be engrossed in the doom and gloom that's happening. Because look, you know it's happening. You're yeah. not gonna if you turn it off for a half hour to an hour, you're not gonna miss anything dire. There has you been know what some I mean? so like oh, some beautiful things that I've seen come out of this. Part of there, it is just. There, Go ahead. Sorry. No, there was one I saw. They they highlighted in the news today. I think it was Italy as well, uh, where there was an eighty year old woman who had a birthday, oh. and they someone someone brought a piece of cake down and set it on a table outside her door, knocked on the door, and ran away. Uh-huh. So they kept their distance from her, and everyone like across the at like every because their apartments are close to each yeah. other, like across the streets and everything. Every so there was a window right by the outside of her apartment door, and she came out. The entire building was leaning out their windows singing happy Dude, birthday to her. That's what I'm talking about. Like that is so amazing and heartwarming. And I think if anything, if you're looking for an aliens have landed kind of moment, like this, <laughs> this is a minor version of that where we look at this right. and I think for a second, it won't last. It will not last. Once this is gone and it passes and it will, we'll go we'll back to what we've always done. Yeah. But for a moment, we're seeing some really cool things like John Legend did yes. a concert. At, he's like, hey, join me online at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to do a concert in my living room. Come check right. it out and then I'll pass it on because it was the guy from Coldplay did it the day before. Chris Chris Martin, yeah. And they're just sort of like, there's a dude. Pink, uh, Pink, Pink did it before that. And so yeah. like it's, yeah. It's just a thing. There's a dude, uh, a cartoonist who's like, hey, come doodle with me. Uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time. Hop on. I'm going to be doodling live. Uh, there's so cool. a, a music director from uh, Second City and IO and all that sort of stuff. She hops on at noon and she she has people. Uh, she sings their statuses and just plays yeah. live and, and sings their statuses. And you know, I saw even on Discord the voice chat thing. Normally, I think you have to pay extra for a server of over ten people. They've waived it for up to fifty. So if you're a student, they're like, come on in, do your stuff, chat with each other, help each other out. Just the idea of the the creativity and the ingenuity of what people are able to do yeah. to combat this or find ways to make this 
A, more interesting, <clears throat> and B, more enjoyable, and, and C, just to give people a breath of fresh air. And it, it really, it shrinks the world in yeah. a lot of ways. World of Warcraft is offering stuff like, hey, you got some time, come in here, hang out with people, be safe. Here's some bonus experience points for this time. Like, just come, awesome. come, you know, be a part of a community. Like, if this is where the technology has really allowed people. I mean, look what we're doing right now. Right. I mean, right, we're, over, we're over Skype. We're still able to do our podcasts. Like, well, there, there's uh, when South by Southwest got canceled, and then a few other ones, you know, took a took a heavy hit. There was a bunch of people, and I think one of the lead ones. There's a there's an online filmmakers community called Stage Thirty Two, and Stage Thirty Two worked with South by Southwest and a bunch of the people who had gotten a, a, a select like the official selections, and they streamed. They offered two different streaming services for people to showcase their videos that were not, or their movies that were not going to be able to be seen at South by Southwest this year. Oh, that's so cool. One, one of them was you could, so if you were someone who got selected for South by Southwest, you could con contact stage 32 and you could say, I want to do a public screening where basically anyone could jump on and the stage 32 had some, I don't know how they got the server space, but they, they were hosting massive viewings for whomever wanted to see these and so that how how cool though that people who didn't get tickets to South by Southwest could now see these fucking films. Right. And then the other option was they could opt to do a private screening just for investors and distribution deals so cool. and this and that. And so they still kept the business end of it alive as well. And there was a couple other platforms who did a similar thing. So again, like the and, and what a cool concept for people to jump on Instagram and do a live call. like that's that's something that could be done even after long after this. How fun is that for someone to just pop on at night and do one or two songs just for their fans just because yeah, thanks. just because thanks. you know yeah. like I love I love that this has forced people to be um, uh, ingenu like it's forced ingenuity a hundred percent agree. and just the 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 really so I'm just I'm still like soaking in that cool thing that they did for that. It's just it's so nice to know that people are looking for ways to celebrate that. Scott Van Pelt's doing the same thing on ESPN. He's like for all these kids, high schoolers, <clears throat> colleges, you know, like their seasons ended, man. The freaking March Madness yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. And he's like, hey, send like, me your your highlight reels. We'll show them on the show. Like we'll celebrate you guys. Like that's so cool. That is is amazing. He's like, you guys didn't get it. Whatever, we'll have it here. We'll, <clears throat> we'll bring out a semi your stuff. Let's celebrate you. And they're doing. I think it. someone was. I think someone was doing that for uh, school plays too. Like if people yeah. had been rehearsing, high schoolers can send in. Like they gathered in the choir room and did a did the the production or whatever. And can I saw something there's the someone other day who's been doing that. Yeah, someone was doing an online like, hey, come join us and let's do a Shakespeare play online. Read for <laughs> a part, grab a part, say a line. We'll do it all together. Oh my God, that's so cool. Like just, again, people are just finding ways to stay connected. Cause I mean, me personally, I'm, I've got some hermit in me, man. I am, I am the idea of going quote unquote stir crazy. Pfft, I'm fine. I'm no big yeah. deal. I don't worry about that at all. That's who I am. Jill's not quite the same way. She's uh, sometimes we bounce off the wall. Dude, I could, I could be in here for easily a week in my house, not leave and be fine. Like that's 100% right. who I am for better or worse. That's who <laughs> I am. And but for some people, that's a real, like, I feel alone. I feel trapped. And we have the ability now to find interesting ways to connect with culture, to connect with all these sorts of things. And I love that a lot of really in general, there's been a few assholes out there, like the dipshits down in Tennessee who went and gathered up all the hand sanitizer that they could, oh, they, you know, yeah. but fortunately Amazon shut down their account so they couldn't sell it. Um, you oh, know, that's awesome. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Amazon was like, fuck that. And they cut them. And so they got left with all the supply and they ultimately donated it all because there was going to be legal action against them. So good for, the, good for Am Like I'm glad that happened. Yeah. Legitimately glad that happened. Yeah. And then you've got things like, um, uh, <clears throat> Disney went ahead and put frozen two on uh Disney plus. Because they're like, right. these kids are going to be home. Like, just give it to them. I saw someone reach out. They tweeted uh, uh, to Pixar. They're like, guys, put Onward, that new movie, on video on demand. They're like, I'll buy it right now. Or like, put it out right. there. I was like, me too. I wanted to see that movie. I was like, oh, I'll buy uh, it. Com 
uh, Comcast is doing. I was just on Xfinity's website, and actually, they are uh, they're doing any uh, any Universal uh, movie that's mm-hmm. supposed to be coming out. Uh, they're like a I think they had a Trolls movie and another movie coming out. Uh, they're doing instead of theater releases, they are you can you can you can access the day it's supposed to be released in the theater. I think for forty eight hours after mm-hmm. it's supposed to be released in the theater, you can basically do a, a home screening of it. So let me ask you this. Yeah. How do you think that's going to transform? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think there will be any trends, business trends that start from the situation? Like, for example, the movie viewing experience, right? We know what it is. We, we, we go to the movie theater when a movie comes out and blah, blah, blah. Do you think that people may or may not enjoy this so much, this option, this immediate release, that this will take... Because it happens already, right? Some of these movies, these independent ones, like, hey, it's out on video now as well as in the theaters. They're just trying to do a shotgun effect because they don't have the pull like some of these other things do to be like stay out forever in the theater and then convert to, you know, DVD and streaming or whatever and go from there. Do you think this will start something in that regard where people will be more willing and there'll be a bigger market for people to, say, consume movies, for example, the day it's released, having it available <coughs> immediately? I would think, you know, it's it's hard to say, uh, like emphatically, no, um, just because, like, it, it's hard. It's again at this point, it's it's hard to know, man. It's it's yeah. really hard to know, you know, what <clears throat> what's going to come out of something like this. Um, I would say there's a there's a good possibility that people will see this model and figure out a way to make it work. I I it, at the end of the day, I would probably say. Not for a long, 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 long time. Only because the amount of money that they would make with an actual theater release versus the amount of money they would make from in-home viewings, I still think would be a clip. I, I still think the theater release eclipses how much money the in-home viewings could bring in. You know, it's funny because I hear that and I, I immediately think of like the CD in the music business, right? Everyone yeah, was like, yeah. hey man, CD, it's where it's at. We can charge 20 bucks for a CD. People are going to buy it. And they yeah. sort of ignored the MP3 world and everything like that. Now, it's not an apples to apples comparison, but when I when you said that, I'm like, yeah. But what if the, that's what the market wants? You know, like would they be willing or would they be able to adjust to that? And I'm I, like, Ugh. I think we're starting to see that with Netflix because yeah, I mean, yeah, true. they still have to give a they still have to give a run in theaters, but I mean, it is not too long after it comes out in the theater that it is right on Netflix yeah. for their stuff, you know. And sometimes same day, like in in theaters this day, and then you know they may release it for a week, yeah. uh, in theaters just to meet the requirements to be considered for the award shows and yeah. what have you. But I, I do think I do think the trend is already start. This may be the thing to help kind of nudge it along in that direction. Yeah. Um, I still don't think it'll be commonplace for quite some time, but there's a. I, I do think there's a solid chance that this could help help nudge it in that direction. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think that'll be interesting to see what sort of unique trends because right now this whole environment is forcing people into a certain state, mm-hmm. physically and mentally and emotionally. And if we're in here for four to six weeks, we may become, we may establish new habits, right? And That's I'll be very true, yeah. curious to see what people will like, dislike from this entire experience. And what that, again, you think about ingenuity. Right. I tell you, humans, man, when they're, when their back's against the wall, they come up with some really interesting shit. Look no further than I, your prisons, you know, like, man, those guys are like, <laughs> you know, I'm in here for life. I'm going to figure out how to make booze in the toilet, you know, with with fruit like it's it, I'm stuck in my house. I'm going to show you how I'm going to entertain myself. I'm going to find a way right. to make this happen. Right. And I, I, well, I never said, I never cease to be amazed by what happens with that stuff. Someone had said on the news, one of the news shows I was watching today that so, was something very similar to that, where they were like, yeah, this I mean. You're going to start seeing if, if people are in this uh, frame of mind in this in this uh, reality for a while, you, you're going to start seeing habits changing and you're going to start seeing people like 
kind of get used to the work from home model and yeah. they're, they're going to, they're going to figure out ways to make their work from home experience more comfortable. Like it would be at the office, like multiple monitors or whatever. Like yeah, baby. This, this could change what people, uh, how, how people, um, kind of demand. Cause I mean, like, look at, look at most business. Um, you know, we went from stodgy cubicle offices and people demanded more freedom. And so we had open office concepts and they demanded more perks. So you got snacks and beer and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, soda and stuff in the office and they demanded that. So when, when a, a demand is, uh, when your workforce wants something enough and the enough noise is raised. So this could be that thing that raises another, the next, the next wave of change. And you might see more work from home. You know, we don't know. And I mean, worst case scenario, we might have to start becoming more a more work from home thing. You know, we, like at this point, we don't know what's going to happen. No, and I, I think that's again, that's the the hardest thing to wrap your head around. Well, real quick here, I want to ask you, what are if, if you could think of off the top of your head a couple of the really interesting things you've noticed from your life in social set? What is it? What do we call it? Social distancing. Distancing. I almost said segregation. I'm like that's kind of it, but not really. Social distancing, you know, working from home. What what are some interesting or positive things that you've gleaned over the last couple of days of your foray into this that have like really surprised you about this new lifestyle? Like either in a positive way or a negative way where you've been like, whoa, like my because my life has been dramatically different because of that. I don't know about if you've experienced the same thing or not. I mean, for as from a very like micro scale, um, I, I found I am, I feel at least like I am more efficient at home. Like I feel I was trying, I was, <laughs> I was so funny. I was rolling this around earlier today trying to figure out, cause I got my, my shift ended. I got off work at five and I closed the, I closed my work laptop and I felt like my head was spinning. I was exhausted <laughs> and I was like, I feel like I've done more work today than I had in the previous like month at work. Like I just felt like I was so much more efficient today. And I was like, is it more efficient or is it the same tasks taking me two or three times as long and that much more effort to go in them because I can't zip around between three screens. Mm. Like at work, I've got three monitors here. I've got a tiny little 13 inch laptop screen. Mm. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, did it seem more, uh, chaotic today and like I was doing more because it took two or three times the effort to get the same thing done or did I actually blow through that much more work today and I, I really think it, I think it was the fact that I blew through that much more work which is a, a surprising good thing is that I, I seem to be more productive at home than I, am, than I am at work something negative that I found is that I got so agitated today <laughs> with all the messages that oh. kept popping up because again, at work, I've got three monitors. So one of my monitors, I relegate all messaging things to mm -hmm. that monitor. And if I can, if I don't need them, I don't look at the monitor. And so if I am, if I'm focusing on a project or I'm focusing on something that needs my attention, I can look at two other monitors that don't constantly have a flashing notification that, Hey, someone needs your attention. Someone needs your attention. Look here, look here mm. today. It was bananas and it was right on my, the one screen I was looking at. And so I got by about 11 AM, I was like really agitated. Wow. And I, it, it took me a while to figure it out. So that's, that's definitely a hindrance as well. Interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. So for me, I've had the option of working from home, you know, before for about a year off and on. So I'm pretty used to the lifestyle. I've got two monitors. I got a super power computer. Life's good for me. No problem. <laughs> I, I just slip right back into it. No big deal. However, Jill is working from home and now Natalie's not going to daycare. So we now every day have to look at our calendars and be like, okay, where do we, where are we both in meetings and who can watch Natalie during, or what are we going to do? So far we're okay. Two days in, we've been able to figure this out. Tomorrow will be a challenge because we both have a meeting at the same time. So we'll have to fucking figure that out. But what I found is kind of similar to you. Um, I basically wrote to my boss and I said, hey, so I'm be working from home with a kid. My wife's working from home, too. Um, I'm committed to meeting my deadlines and achieving all of our initiatives. Just know 
that I'm going to be working in sprints. And those sprints are going to change every day. I will be working in probably blocks of time. And then I will be available via my phone. But I will not be like, if you ask me to look something up, I may not be able to do it because I've got to watch my kid. Like, right. I'm not going to be able to be like, oh, yeah, I can look that up right now because I can't because my wife's on a video call with her job. And we've, we've got to flex with that. Fortunately, my company is extremely understanding. My boss is very understanding. No big deal. But because of that, and I know I only have this small stretch of time to get something done, I'm super productive and I'm super focused because I'm like, I have 50 minutes to get this done right. before I have to go grab Natalie. So I got to go, 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 go. And I'm just like, bam, bam, right. bam, bam. I feel so much more accomplished. And That's on fantastic. the other side, I fucking have spent some amazing quality time with my daughter. Like just see, that's really cool. absolutely amazing. Uh, the very first day I sat down, like I told Joe, I'm like, hey, seven to nine in the morning, I'm getting up early, I'm hitting it. And then she had something at nine. I'm like, if you can handle her for those first two hours, I'm like, I'll take her after that for two hours. And like I sat down with her, I came up with all these ideas. I'm like, cool, for 30 minutes, we're going to work on doing letters. We're going to write letters because that's what she's into right now. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'll draw them out. You draw them out. I was like, then we're going to move on to doing puzzles. And then we're going to build some shit. And then we're going to do um, drawing. So we, we built a new fucking porch. So we took apart the lawnmower. We got new <laughs> spark plugs. And then I'm like, we're getting some outside time. I'm like, what are we going to do? Let's go yeah. fucking. We're going on a walk. I don't care if it's snowing. We're going on a walk. And then it's lunchtime. And then it's nap time. And then she gets up. And it's like, all right, what else can we do? Let's read. <clears throat> Let's read some right. books. And then very minimal TV time and stuff because we really used to be like, hey, sit and watch this movie. We'll go. And sure. Right. Do whatever. And I've had some amazing time with her. And I felt like this sort of like bonus to our relationship. You know, today I had her from nine to 11 in the morning and I was like, we're going outside. The sun's out. We're going outside. It was a little cold, but I'm like, fuck it. We're going for a walk. Dude, we were yeah. gone for over an hour. She's, she awesome, wanted to, man. She wanted to walk to a playground. I'm like, going, I go, you realize how far that is, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, let's fucking go. We walked all the way there, played around. I told her, hey, if you can walk all the way there, I'll carry you on my back on the way back. So I carried her on my back. I'm like, this is also good exercise for me. Sure, um, yeah. And also, because I have a tendency to sit in one place for a long time, it gets me up and moving. I feel right. more awake, more energetic. Right. Like It's well, been an amazing sort of like look at how things could be also again already appreciate teachers and shit but god damn after this i'm like man right I, 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 this is why i could never homeschool my kid the the, <laughs> the 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 hubris to think that i could teach my child anything i'm like guess they're going you're working on letters right let's look what's i'm just copying what they're doing let's work on letters <laughs> you have a what do you do in math you build shit cool it's build shit you know like right. well whatever. that's another that that's another bonus that I that I actually just thought when you said that. Like I've been uh, I've been uh, going on runs again nice. at lunch, and I haven't been able to do that because when I when I exercise, I sweat like a fucking pig, and I don't want to just sit in the office in that stank. Yeah, and so I get to I can come home, nice. I can shower, and with like wet hair and like yeah. you know ratty clothes, I don't have to worry about getting back to a like quote unquote work ready. Yeah, you know, or I can come home and I can sit at home in my stink for a little bit. You sure. know, like it, I don't have to worry about office mates, and so I've been able to get back out and actually start exercising again. And it's been the last two days have been fucking wonderful. And to to your point about uh, you know letting your boss know, I feel like at this point too, businesses and bosses and everyone they've got it. They <clears throat> again, we are in a, a, a position that we have never been in before. We're needing to think outside the box and consider things that we've never been asked to consider before. So it is part of the responsibility for uh, for jobs. I feel like it's it should be to a to a degree a requirement for them to loosen up their the deadlines and loosen up things and say like, look, I'm gonna get my work done, but you're gonna have to understand that I might be MIA for an hour or yeah. an hour and a half. And it's it's just the reality that it is now. And it's not like this is. You know, it's not like this is uh, your it, 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 normal. This is not like this is December, yeah. When when everything was was you know regular, and you were like, I'm just gonna fuck off for two hours. You yeah. know, like this is completely different. So I would, I would like to think that a lot of uh, you know offices and businesses have have uh, you know kind of adjusted themselves. You know, to to 
to help with that because you know people people just have to find a way. As as Ian Malcolm said, uh, life uh, finds a way. That's so true. And just, you know, to stuff I'd add on top of that is like I've had so much fun with Jill being around here. Like she's working her ass off, but I have been like I feel like I've I've been killing it in the joke department. Like just slinging just whatever, and I've been making her laugh. And Jill's Jill this weekend, she's like, she bought a shitload of food. She goes, I'm cooking this week. I'm like, okay. Like she's like, just so you know, I I you know, because normally I cook, I cook like 95% of the time. She's like, no, 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 I'm gonna be here. She's like, we're doing masta choli. I got this chicken thing I'm gonna try because she's here. She doesn't have to commute all the way home. She can help out with that. And it's like we're just we're tag teaming it. We're spending a lot of time together as a family, and I feel That's like awesome, just this great bond with her. Like it's it's some part of this makes me think like, man, how can we all how can we do this when we get on each right. other's nerves? But we're doing our things. We're helping with Natalie, and then we're absolutely just li- we're living our best lives. I feel like right yeah. now, and it feels great. Well, kind of makes you it kind of makes you wonder how you could. You're like, is there a way that I could adjust my life? So this is my life. And you see, know, that's like what I'm could, talking about. Yeah. What habits and what new things will be born from this? Where people are like, right. wait, <clears throat> this could be I like this. the new yeah. work life. Like, can we do this all the time? And right. that will be extremely interesting to see what will come from all this. Well, there's one thing that I do think will come from this. And I think we're going to see it happen sooner than later. I think I read about this. Yeah, it's called The Throwdown. <laughs> Uh, and because I referenced Ian Malcolm nice. not so long ago, uh, I think that today's throwdown needs to be a little bit more lighthearted. Nice. And uh, I think it needs to be between uh, Ian Malcolm himself, Jeff Goldblum, and one Mr. Bill Murray. So it's wait. Because I feel like is it is it's it Jeff? It's Jeff Goldblum. Okay. Versus <laughs> Bill Murray. Gotcha. I was like, wait, it's Ian Malcolm versus <laughs> versus the real life Bill Murray. Yes. <laughs> No, it's it's, uh, it's, oh. it's present day present and not even like heyday. It's present day yeah. Jeff Goldblum versus present day Bill Murray because they are at the peak of their weirdness. And I was going to say both they are both extremely eccentric dudes. Like yep, very. Absolutely. I watched <laughs> um, the Hot Ones episode with Jeff Goldblum, and I was oh, like, I need to see that. I was like, this dude's weird. <laughs> I love him. Everything about him. It was just the way that he responded to things and just like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I was like, man, this is an odd dude, but not necessarily in a bad way. No, just for yeah. whatever reason, I'm like, I didn't expect this from you. But at the same time, right. he's incredibly cool. And I think this is a wonderful pairing of Bill Murray and and and, and him. I would say yeah. I look at Bill Murray as definitely being way more aggressive. <laughs> Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Like Bill Murray's got a, a hidden rage inside of him. I just, that, you know, that, the things that he yeah. can he can stir up and, and and do. And I just look at Jeff Goldblum as he's a lover, not a fighter, man. Like that's kind of like my <laughs> my thing, the way that he is, his lifestyle. Like he does. He's not the kind of guy that looks at me like he holds grudges. He seems like he, he just wakes up every day and just, you know, eats a salad, you know, and has this silk shirt unbutton three buttons down as he stares over his veranda looking over the ocean and but just underneath that shirt he also holds <laughs> is a, a wonderful chest of hair in, he's he sells a seven inch blade <laughs> but he doesn't that know he how to will, use it he, 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 he has it because it has a good energy from the aztecs and you know he read about oh, them he keeps it, it there okay. but he has no idea how to use it he has no intention of ever using it he goes it's a symbol uh, does uh does the Pointy in go uh, in uh, into him or into me or where does this go? Like, Do um, I hold it? I, you know, it really, what, what what this is is it's the you see the chakras of of the dead of of the mystics. Um, they they pull together the energies of the universe and really what it does is it guards your heart. You know, just like short round well, um, said to Indy, uh, cover your heart. If he's got uh, a magic knife, then I think I feel like I got to give it to Gold. <laughs> it's not a magic knife. He's just made up a whole bunch of bullshit that he bought at a you know a gift shop when he was down in you know South America. He didn't make shit up, Doug. Oh, he did. <laughs> that is all one hundred percent. See, what'll happen is that knife. Bill Murray's got a you know a revolver in his holster in his ankle like he's a cop for some reason. He just pulls it out and he's just like, Whoosh. 
Yeah, but it's not loaded. All it's got it's got it's got one shot in it. and it's got one bullet in it, and they challenge them to Russian roulette. But the bullet, if you unscrew it, it has whiskey inside of it. Exactly. Yeah. So Doesn't you'll die fire. slowly if it hits you. <laughs> it disinfects, not made of whiskey. but also infects at the same time. <laughs> it's it's very scientifically advanced. Yeah, I, I feel like yeah. uh, Bill Murray is a little more unhinged, almost like a, a chimpanzee. <laughs> and, you know, and if there's one thing I know about chimpanzees is that they can kick your ass. <laughs> they can what? They can kick your ass. Oh, that's not what I heard. Okay. Yeah. They can also uh, lick your ass. They eat you from the ass first. That's for sure. Yeah, I gotta say, I I, I don't think I don't think uh, even though even though you have uh, no butted every single thing I've said, uh, I don't think that Jeff Goldblum is as uh, <laughs> passive as you might think. But I do think Bill Murray uh, sh- somehow equating him to a rabid chimpanzee is shockingly accurate, and yeah. so I do. Th- I don't know why I've never thought of him that way before, and yeah. it's so fucking spot on. So I got to give Bill Murray for the win. All right. So here's what I got to say. First of all, I will no but you all day long when it comes to the throwdown, because this is a do or die situation, Justin Strandlin. And you need okay. to understand that. Sasco would not approve, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all rules apply except in the, in the throwdown. Okay. All right. That's good to know. I didn't realize that was the rules. I didn't realize we were playing prison rules. <laughs> Wait, prison, <laughs> prison rules are like, hey, man. We got to support each other, except when we fight to the death. <laughs> right. I didn't realize that was the, the way that this was. <laughs> Bill Murray for the win. For the win! <laughs> this was fun, man. This really was. This is. I, I, uh, I didn't realize they were so close in age, too. How old are they? They're two years apart. Murray yeah. 69, Goldblum 67. Did not realize that. Dude, that was a great, that was a great pick. It was really, really good. I'm impressed. Well, I wanted, I've been, <laughs> for some reason, I have been on a, I, I don't know why, but Jurassic Park has come up in like random searches I've done. Like I look up YouTube videos and one of the, like th- w- three or four of the recommendations have been Jurassic Park things. And nice. a, like a clip came up today of him saying uh, life uh, finds a way. And yeah. I was like, why is, why is Jurassic Park like in and around me right now? And so I was like, well, fuck it. We need to, we need to bring Jeff Goldblum into this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? Get out there and watch Jurassic Park. It's a get good out movie. there and uh, watch Jurassic and watch. Park. Uh, yeah, man, because life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you're fighting Bill Murray. Oh, my God. Um, no, I would. Uh, I'm not going to recommend anything. What I'm going to recommend this week is um, uh, really figuring out how you can make someone's life better. So for the next week. Really think about, you know, do you have a, an out like a grandparent or an older aunt or uncle or someone at home who isn't, you know, who isn't or doesn't have anyone around or who might be a little bit more isolated? Like it is, even though I, I know like you you like the that if uh, a, it it can really start to weigh on you mentally when you literally have no one to talk to. So if they've got an iPhone, FaceTime them. They'd l- probably love to see you. If if as simple as just calling them too, um, you know. I think there's a lot that we can do to to kind of be looking out for each other. Don't hoard shit. You don't need to hoard toilet paper. You don't need to hoard food. To buy a reasonable amount, and you're just fucking everyone else over if you hoard it. And I my my recommendation is to just try to be as good to each other as we can in the next couple of weeks. Nice. I'm gonna echo that and tell you guys to go buy the game Among Us on Steam. Um, <laughs> it's a great way to connect with your friends. It's five bucks. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, it's a game of teamwork and betrayal. So if you want to talk Everything about, we need. <laughs> you know, how to connect with people and figure out how good a liar you are with your friends, it's fucking great. It's it's a great way to connect uh, digitally with people and blow off some steam. And, you know, if you're an imposter, you might murder someone and maybe get away with it if you're good at lying. I mean, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> So, seriously though, agree with that with Justin. Take care of each other. This is a this is a tough time. It's a weird time. I've never seen this. I don't know what's 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 up, but I know that there's been some beautiful things in this, and I'm hanging on to those because it's been really cool. And you know, with that being said, you know, hang out with us on social media. Reach out to us. We love to hear from you guys. Make sure you're okay. Make sure you're doing well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Mind Gap Podcast. 
Uh, if you get lonely, check out our YouTube page. We've got some great stuff there. We've got uh, Justin Plays Video Games, Doug Watches Awkward Videos, plus uh, our most recent uh, episodes are there as well. And when we can get it up and running, come hang out with us on Twitch when we can figure this out. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out so that we can Twitch because I think it's going to be really cool. And, you know, maybe... We'll figure out some things where maybe, you know, maybe we can hop on multiple nights, just hang out with you guys for a little bit, you know, see what's up, shoot the shit, um, make sure you're all doing well. We'd love to hear from you. So don't be a stranger. Let us know what's up. And, you know, Justin, tell them how they can check in with you, too. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It is the fun way of spelling it. Um, uh, you can send stuff my way or send stuff to the uh, MindGap social media presences. If you hear of someone, similar to the stuff they're doing in Italy, if you if you come across something that's really cool, you're like, oh, that's such a cool new thing that someone decided to do. Let us know about it, and we'll try to talk about it and call it out and you know, lift it up on the the next episode. Um, and while you're in the online realm, check us out on uh, iTunes or an Apple Podcast on Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Podcast, wherever you can find and consume the podcast. Like us, subscribe to us, share us, uh, rate us, review us. All the things. The big one for us is sharing because sharing is caring. Uh, but do it from a safe distance uh, for the foreseeable future. And then two east eighth dot com slash mind gap, and then two east eighth in general. Uh, we've had to retool some. <laughs> Some stuff we're working on this year based off of our current situation, but we still got some good stuff coming out. So nice. uh, just be on the lookout. Awesome. Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Twitch people who hopped on for a few minutes while we done fucked it up. Thank you. Listeners, thank you. And you all have a safe and dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.